Birgesson. I'm called Birger in my language. Um, I'm from Sweden. I have a different background. I'm not the world optimist saying that we will change everything and everything will be very good and you have to stay in place, <laughs> otherwise it will be attractive. Uh, so, basically, my background is military intelligence. Uh, we look on the bad side. Isn't that a contradiction? <laughs> it's like uh, ridiculing the French. I heard it before. <laughs> so, no. uh, the thing is that what we do is that we work with infrastructure. And we call it like infrastructure 2.0. And that's just to be part of your cool guys and girls. So what we do is that we build what we think is the next infrastructure. We heard before that on top of this bandwidth on top of uh, IP we can do lots and lots of lots of things but there are people controlling the infrastructure that carries your IP and the people that control that infrastructure don't like some of the things that is happening in the free interesting world that you have created on top of that infrastructure and these companies try to do things against that we have a lot of discussion for example about net neutrality people sell an internet connection and then people pay for internet and they use Google. And people then say, Google makes a lot of money. And then the people that sold internet says, what about us? We provided internet. Yeah, but you get paid. Yes, but Google makes a lot of money. We want some extra money from Google. So we will now sell an internet connection without Google. Everything except Google. You want Google? You pay extra. This is, it sounds really horrific. But this is actually happening. There are other places in the world where, you know, the copyright industry, for an example, they don't like the peer-to-peer. -peer. They can't stop the peer-to-peer. -peer. So what do they do? They try to get to the people with the cables. And there are other things. So if you don't want these political things, there are technical things. People are saying the old infrastructure can't handle the growth of bandwidth. The video blogs and uh, all of the funny things <laughs> takes a lot of bandwidth. Take just an example from Sweden. The last 12 months, the average bandwidth usage have increased four times. So people still pay the same amount of money or less money and use four times more product. That creates competition. That creates interesting challenges. And many of the old players, they say, this could not be done. This needs to be controlled. We should take things out. We should do this. We should do that. Maybe bloggers should pay to be on the internet or something. So... What we think is that they have the wrong infrastructure. If you have old horses and carriages and you want to f move a lot of things around, then you have a problem. If you have the right infrastructure, that is not a problem. So what we're doing, very boring, very deep down, very hardcore, is that we're building the next generation of infrastructure. And it should not be the old copper cables. Fiber optics into the basement, and then you put something that's called Category 6 into the apartment, and on top of that you put a Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi, of course, in the next generation, 802.11n, gives you 540 megabits. And then we put a gigabit into every home. So every home has a gigabit fixed line, and they are surrounded by lots and lots and lots of hotspots, of course compatible with phone. Blasting, <laughs> blasting at 540 megabits. And the radius shouldn't be so large. It should be only maybe 100 meters or so. So only people inside the 100 meters can share. If you compare that to how they build old infrastructure, 3G, or as it's even worse called in a new way, called HSDPA, they have a, a transmitter. And then they reach approximately 5 kilometers. And everybody inside this field of five kilometers, share bandwidth. Well, which one do you think will give you most bandwidth? It's very, uh, it's very simple. So, what we do, we build the infrastructure. On top of that, we create a layer. So that instead of saying, I build the infrastructure, I need to control the service, we then allow it for everybody to be open on equal terms so that everybody can bring their services on top of it and then the end user can choose. So it's not that you get a wire, and that means my wire, <laughs> meaning that you must have my telephony, my cable television, or whatever. You get a wire giving you IP, and lots of it, gigabit, and then 540 megabits in the air. And then everybody is allowed, on top of that infrastructure, at equal revenues. So everybody, it's equal. And then the consumers choose. 
So we don't put only Skype, we put anybody on there. But you, know, you don't have to bundle infrastructure, you separate the infrastructure from the services, and the services are internet. So any one of you can put your services on top of it. This also makes it possible to do something that is a little bit different, and that's that you can do the reversing of infrastructure. So saying, today you say, you must have this amount of money to get whole internet. So, and then if you pay for internet, of course you get whole internet. But you can do something interesting. You said, I only want one service. To say, I only want Skype. Should I then get a discount? That could be a thing, so we do that. And this creates opportunities. So if I'm an old lady, or if I'm a young girl, or I'm a young boy, or if it's me, and I only want Skype. Maybe I want to have a retreat somewhere. I only want Skype. I don't want anything else to distract me. But I want to be able to call my mother or something. This means that now I can only have that service and I can pay a little bit of money only for that service. This means that now this service combined with that level of infrastructure gets cheaper than the old alternatives. So you get a higher demand of bandwidth, like you can give much more bandwidth for the same money, and you can get only per service on the lower end competing. So basically this means that if our infrastructure is right, the old telcos will basically change their model to this model or cease to exist. And the good news for that is that that will create a level playing field for you guys. And then we will have what Thomas talked about with the level field where ideas compete. It's not about infrastructure taking some players off the field, but everybody's on the field and you as a user can choose. And we think this is very important. And we think this could be a real advantage in Europe. Because the Americans are actually the most backwards in this. Their cable companies are incredibly backwards. They have detailed agreements with their landlords when they put in cable television that you're not allowed to change any infrastructure in the building without their permission. Including changing water pipes. Because that's infrastructure. They also have a lot of lawyers. <laughs> but it's really important. Infrastructure is really important because if we can have the right infrastructure, say for an example, just an old way of saying it, uh, what if the Swedish car industry, say Volvo, Volvo, is, when they were Swedish, if Volvo owned the highway, would that be a good thing? He said, I've built a Saab, I've built a Saab. Oh, no, 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 not on the Volvo highway, no. If you pay for a Volvo, you can put a saw on top of it. <laughs> this is how we have it today. This is how it's today with infrastructure. And it's old and it's slow. We need super fast infrastructure and we need it to be a level playing field for everybody to get involved. Then the best idea will win and the cartels will change or die. And I like that. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to say that, that you haven't mentioned the price of these. So <laughs> it's in, in his company, Labs2, you get a gigabyte mm -hmm. connection to the internet two ways, okay? Two ways, like we're already salivating. <laughs> For 89 euros, which I know it's more than, you know, 30, but it's a gigabyte two ways, you know. I would move to Sweden just to sign up for his company. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the kicker, that what Martin talked about. The thing that I'm getting in two weeks, I'm actually putting the physical stuff in there, so I'm going on the pavement, putting the shark there, so where they will dig. I'm getting, in my basement, maybe somebody already has it, but I haven't heard, and I looked for people in the world that has it. I could possibly have the world's first 10 gigabit connection in my basement. I will have more bandwidth in my basement than most countries in the world is connected with. <laughs> and this is what I should have as a standard. This is what we should have in Europe, in every basement. Then your blogs will rock. Thank you. <laughs> Hans Peter had a question. Yeah, so Token Norwegian will ask a sweeter question. So why aren't you the new cartel? Yeah. So if you can control, if I, you know, if I, it sounds to me like this is net neutrality flipped on its head. Yep. Right. So now you're controlling that. If I pay the full price, I'll get everything. But then if I pay less, then I'll get less. Yep. 
And the thing is, how you do it is two things. You use the right technology, because then you get a better price performance. I can make more money than the old guys still giving a lot of more bandwidth. So, right technology, path. Going with the data centric instead of uh, circuit switch centric. But th that's the technical path. The second thing is, how do we make sure we don't make the same mistakes again? And that is to regulate. What we do is that today the incumbent has a full monopoly the full way. So they're selling the service, they're doing this, they're doing that, so they're doing the infrastructure, they're doing the technology. What we're saying is that separate it. The infrastructure, the physical fiber infrastructure should, in my opinion, be controlled by the government. But it should be the physical infrastructure. Then on top of that you put technology. Technology in Sweden is regulated by we're using landlords. So we get a lease on five to ten years to put the technology in there. They use their own lines. They control the lines. If they don't like us after five to ten years, they just change us to somebody that is more adapted to the technology than we are. And then on top of that, we create an open marketplace where everybody is allowed to participate on equal terms. And that is a transparent model. So everybody sees what everybody is paying so that you don't get any doing side deals. But I agree, there is always a risk for a new monopoly. But the way the old monopolies are developing, it can't get much worse. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? Uh, that's an additional point. In Sweden, Birgit is called Broadband Jesus. By the media, you can't argue with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't like the religion. I don't believe in God. <laughs> no, I don't believe in God, so I think it's a good question. Uh, uh, the new Jesus of Geeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jonas. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much.